What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Legit Street Cars. My name is Alex and right before I bought this guy, my super cheap C63 AMG, I came out with a factory defect video on its engine, the M156. And we talked about a lot of things. We talked about head bolts, camshafts, cam adjusters, lifters, and I also touched on a part that could cause catastrophic engine damage if it failed like this. All right, key on. Kill it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why I recommend replacing M156 fuel injectors on a regular interval. Now, to be fair, fuel injectors can fail on practically any engine. In fact, I had one a couple days ago on a normal Ford that stuck open just like the video you saw. Uh, but in talking to a lot of my Mercedes-Benz dealership technician friends, they have seen a slew of these come in over the last couple years as these engines have aged. And when they stick open, they could hydro lock the engine. So at 70,000 miles, I'm replacing all of my fuel injectors with bigger ones, and I'm not gonna run gasoline through them anymore, sort of. All right guys, so here is everything for today's cool little project. So excited about this one, we have a full E85 flex fuel kit uh, and guys are reporting around 20, 25 wheel horsepower uh, with this kit alone without any other tuning. So you can put this on a totally stock car if you'd like. Uh, and then because ethanol has a higher octane and runs cooler, if you combine it with a little bit of custom tuning, uh, you can gain even more power than that. So this kit comes very complete. You have your harness, uh, you have your controller, which actually connects via Bluetooth to your cell phone to show you the ethanol content. I'll show you that uh, in today's video. You get your fuel line, more harness, the ethanol sensor, uh, and some more fittings. And these are the fuel injectors that I'll be replacing mine with. They are 630 cc fuel injectors. Uh, you can go with the E85 kit with factory fuel injectors, uh, but because I am installing eventually these long tube headers uh, and we have the performance Eurocharge tune, uh, we're gonna want a bigger fuel injector to make sure we don't run lean. Uh, now I got everything you see here from Victory Road Performance in Virginia. You guys probably heard we mentioned them in the past. I get practically all of my AMG performance parts from these guys and they sell performance parts for non-AMG Mercedes as well. So you don't need an AMG car to start going fast. Uh, now I'm gonna leave a link to their site down below with a coupon code legit E55 that'll get you 10% off a ton of stuff on their website, including everything that you see me install in today's video. So before you buy anything from VRP, type in legit E55 and you'll get that 10% off. Now we are gonna start off uh, by replacing the fuel injectors, so let's get to work. Okay, so the first step to doing the E85 kit or the fuel injectors is to get rid of all of this stuff. So our cover that's missing our star, which I'm going to glue on. We have our front intake two thingies, and when you have a car as messed up as mine, this thing gets kind of loose too. <laughs> and we're just gonna pop these off here. You got your connectors for your mass airflow sensors. And just like that. And then we will unscrew the air boxes. These just pop up and pull right out. Very easy. Then we just have these little foam covers. They just pop right out like that. And you can see all your fuel injectors. Okay, then we're just gonna get this part out. Don't just pull up on it. There is a little clip that you can get to. Okay, that way you don't break all the plastic on the bottom here. And then there's another one on the other side too. All right, and you got a hose right here. And this comes right out. Okay, so before we can pop the rail up, we have to take away this fuel hose and we're actually not gonna be reusing this because we need a different hose we can fit the ethanol sensor into uh, for the E85 kit. So you're just gonna want to uh, break this loose from both ends, just like that. And now this car has been sitting overnight so we shouldn't have too much fuel uh, in the system, but you do wanna get a rag here just to kind of soak it up. You just twist this off. A little bit of fuel came out, not too much, that's it, this is gone. All right, so next let's just disconnect this one connector here. And then we have to go around and just unplug all of our fuel injectors and use, use a little screwdriver, be gentle not to break all of the connectors. They should just pop out very easily like that. 
Once the fuel injector harness is disconnected, I like to get this vacuum line out of the way, just kind of pull it out of its slots. This will give you a little bit of room when you're getting the fuel rail out of there. Then it's just a matter of four bolts. And then at that point, you're just lifting up very gently on the fuel rail and it should pop up. Don't go too crazy here. I had mine out not too long ago when I was checking to see if these were leaking. So that's why it's kind of popped up easier, but these can get kind of stuck in there, uh, but it's not too bad. And then you just kind of snake it out. Uh, and don't break the vacuum lines either. That would be not good. I'm gonna get a little fuel uh, from where you disconnected the line. That's it, our fuel rail's out. Now we can bring it to the table and replace our old fuel injectors. All right, so I've already drained all of the fuel out of the rail, and all we need to do is take a flat blade screwdriver and pry out the fuel injector clip. We're gonna do this one at a time. Grab the fuel injector body, pull straight up. They usually come right out. They can be kind of stuck in there. Uh, and then at that point, we're just going to grab our new fuel injector. And you can use Vaseline for this, but I'm using this old Mercedes stuff that I've had forever. You wanna lubricate uh, both ends of the injector seal. Uh, and then what we're doing is popping it right back in like this, snapping our clip in like so, and that's it, you're done. Now we're just gonna repeat that for the rest of the fuel injectors. So I'm showing you guys the fuel injector replacement step by step because this is something that kind of freaks people out. They just assume on an AMG car, especially that replacing your fuel injectors, it's gonna cost like two, $3,000, something like that. Uh, well, these fuel injectors, they're only $600, a little less uh, with my coupon code. And this is definitely something you guys can do at home, even if you're not doing the performance fuel injectors and you just wanna replace them with factory units uh, just for kind of maintenance purposes, if you really enjoy your M156 equipped vehicle. Uh, this applies to all of them too, by the way. This isn't just the C63. So what I'm showing you here applies to every single car with this engine. You guys can definitely do this at home, even if you're just used to maybe changing oil and little stuff like that. You can replace your fuel injectors and literally save uh, thousands of dollars compared to the dealership. So I just wanna let you guys know that. Um, and if there is ever a job that you think is too complicated to do or you just don't have good work instructions, I've shown this in the past, but there are some repair shop manuals, some factory repair shop manuals uh, that I use on all my Mercedes cars and all of my cars in general. Uh, and I'll be using them in this video too for the torque specs, which is very important. They're only like $20 and I'll leave a link down below as well. And of course a coupon code, you guys know I love getting you guys coupon codes. That'll get you 10% off. They're only $20 anyway. Uh, and what's cool is, you can get a workshop manual for practically any car in existence. So whether you have an Audi, maybe you got an Armstrong Sidley, or a Great Wall, <laughs> or maybe you just have a Lexus, a BMW, a Chevy, or basically any other car, you can find a factory style workshop repair manual with step-by-step -step instructions for basically any job, including the torque specs and these special tools that you might need. Uh, so definitely check out that link in the video description box as well. All right, so we are on our last fuel injector. I've done most of these while I'm talking to you guys. That's how simple and how quick this job goes. Uh, and we're gonna go back over to the car. I'm gonna show you a really cool way to clean out the bores that these injectors sit in by using a kit that I actually bought for my diesel CDI. Now where the injector fits into the fuel rail is normally really clean and you don't have to do much with that, but check out the bore in the intake manifold where these things sit. It's pretty nasty, pretty grimy. We definitely wanna clean those out before we get our brand new injectors fitted in. And what I'm gonna be using uh, to do that is this really neat fuel injection seat cleaning kit. I originally bought this for my E320 CDI when I replaced the fuel injector seal rings. Uh, but what we're gonna be using out of this kit are these really long Q-tips. So they give you a bunch of these and all I did was I already pre-soaked this end with brake clean and we're just gonna kinda get in here and go to town and get this as clean as possible. So I'm actually probably gonna spend about a half an hour uh, just getting these minted out completely. As you can see, we're gonna go through quite a few of these. Uh, and again, I'm gonna leave a link to this in the video description box. Guys, just check the links to all of my videos. <laughs> 
I put a ton of good information in there, sometimes torque specs and work instructions as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up and then I'll show you the final product. All right, so I used one big Q-tip per cylinder and they're looking pretty nice. So I know around here is kind of dirty, but what matters, the seat in there uh, is really nice and clean and our O-ring is gonna seal perfectly up against it. All right guys, with everything clean, we are reinstalling our fuel distributor with injection valves. <laughs> that is actually what Mercedes-Benz calls these things. When I was trying to look up the work instructions, I couldn't find fuel injector. I was freaking out. I'm like, what is going on? And sometimes when you're working on European cars, uh, they have kind of a different translation for some things. So these are injection valves and the rail is a fuel distributor. Check it out, fuel distributor and injection valves. So weird. Uh, but I have this up uh, because we want to take a look here at the bottom and pass it up. Okay, here we go. So fuel distributor to resonance intake manifold, nine Newton meters. That's it guys, those four bolts for the rail don't go crazy. All right, so once you've lined up all of your injection valves into the intake, just push down. It'll kind of snap in just like that. That's it. Then we're going to torque these down uh, to nine Newton meters and I'll put the rest of it back together in reverse order. Oh, and if you guys are replacing the injectors with larger ones like I am, you will need a custom tune for larger injectors. Uh, we're not doing the tuning portion for the flex fuel. That is what that control module does. The tune is going to adjust for the larger fuel injectors. But if you're running stock ones, uh, you're going to be totally fine just popping them in and calling it a day. Click, click. All right, we're moving on to the E85 kit. Now I've mapped this all out. It looks really easy to do. I think you can get this whole kit done in like a couple hours. But first, we're replacing this uh, broken oil cap here. Yeah, it looks much better. Okay, so what we have to install is the controller, an ethanol sensor, and the harness. And everything seems plug and play, uh, except all we have is a ground wire. That's about it. Uh, so I'm gonna show you guys how to pin this for the new fuel injectors. Uh, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know. But first, uh, what we have to do is install a new fuel hose. Uh, and what we're gonna be doing is splicing this in between this hose so it can read uh, the ethanol. It doesn't matter which direction this goes into. But here, let me just show you this. So they, in the kit, they give you everything. So what you have here is just a little barb adapter that goes onto the rail. So we're just gonna go ahead and screw that on and tighten her up. That's it. They also give you this fuel hose with some nice clamps. So we're gonna go ahead and put this end here. We'll tighten this here in a minute. Um, and then we need it to connect right here. And what they've given us is this female section right here with the barb. So we're just gonna go ahead and screw that on and tighten that up as well. Now I've never installed one of these E85 kits, but it seriously looks so easy. We're just gonna kind of like learn together here. And like I'd imagine most of the time you're gonna spend is just kind of figuring out where you want to mount everything. Um, so I think I'm gonna put this right along here somewhere and then I'll splice in the hose. Um, and let me just skip ahead to showing you guys uh, how we're gonna be wiring up uh, the fuel injectors. And then instead of me showing you me messing around, basically trying to figure out where everything routes to, I'm just gonna show you the final product with everything mounted. Uh, and I'll show you that up close so you know exactly where to put everything so you can duplicate this exact job on your M156. And again, with this flex fuel system, uh, this is gonna be the same install for any car with this engine. All right guys, so if you're using an aftermarket fuel injector, uh, it's gonna have a connector like this that clips on instead of one like this from the factory. So basically we need to connect these pins into here and then connect this onto the injector. So we're basically uh, just doing kind of like an adapter harness. Uh, so they give you a little connector here and what you have to do is first figure out uh, which one of these two wires from the factory harness is 12 volts uh, and then you're gonna connect that to the red lead uh, here and hang on, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So basically we have our voltmeter, it's already grounded. Uh, so we're just going to probe these two, not that one. And sorry, my ground probably isn't any good. There we go, see that? 12 volts. So we know that pin number one is our power. So what we wanna do is see how these are uh, oriented 
Okay, so we know that pin number one, this is gonna clip in just like this, needs to go in this slot right here. So we want our red pin going into this slot off of our connector or off of our, our uh, aftermarket harness. And be very gentle with these guys. Uh, don't jam them. Figure out exactly how they go. It's hard to tell, uh, show you on camera, but this is a flat connector in this uh, case. So you just want to make sure that you're going in properly. Take your time here. Okay, that's it. So that one's in. It just clicks right in. And then obviously you're going to put your other pin uh, on the other side. Actually, you want to do these kind of kind of have them going in at the same time. Actually, they uh, they fit a lot nicer that way. And we're just going to slide that in. And you'll hear a nice positive clicking just like that. And that's it. Now we can connect this with our factory harness like so. And now this can be plugged into our new fuel injector. So this first one, you probably want to unplug that and then just fish it down here past the rail. And that's it. It's clicked, it's clicked in, put this back. And that is it for that one. So you're going to do this for all eight of them. Um, okay. And so there, what, so we know that number one pin is power. I'm probably going to go around and just check the other ones, especially in that bank, just in case Mercedes did something crazy. But uh, yeah, just check which one is 12 volts and then it's always going to be red here. And we're just going to go around and install our connectors. I already did this one uh, very nice and easy. Uh, and then we're going to be routing the harness and uh, hooking up the fuel system and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this entire job and then show you how everything is laid out. All right guys, E85 flex fuel kit is fully installed on the C63 and I purposely have almost no fuel in the tank because we're gonna be going to the gas station after this uh, and I'll show you guys the app where it tells you how much ethanol is in your fuel. Uh, but so far, I am very happy with the installation. It's very clean and as you guys saw in the time lapse, I popped out this piece of plastic, drilled it out and I just installed a grommet that I found at the parts store and then drilled that out so we had the nice soft rubber here uh, so that we don't have any sharp edges rubbing on our harness. Uh, I also wrapped up the harness just for kind of a little cleaner look where it's exposed uh, in the engine compartment. Uh, and then that side for, the, for this bank, for the passenger bank, it's just run, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but it's just run down here. You just tuck it in. It's not zip tied in or anything. Uh, and then with the 
fuel injector covers on, you really can't tell what's going on here, but if you pop them off, I know we've added a lot more wiring, uh, but it doesn't really protrude out much more. These still fit on there very, very nicely. Just makes for a really clean setup. Uh, now, as far as the flex fuel sensor, the ethanol sensor, uh, they don't give you any mounting tabs or anything like that, so there's really nowhere to drill that in, but it's a very light sensor, guys, so it doesn't take much to hold this in, so I just zip tied it here. Uh, it's really, this is totally fine. It's not going anywhere, uh, and then we have our fuel hoses with all of our clamps tightened down. I've pressurized the system. We have no leaks at all, uh, and then I ran the controller box down in here. You really can't even see it, which is good. So uh, what I did was I used two of these right here. So these are uh, like Velcro, but with a sticky side. And I use these to hang up pictures and stuff in my house. But all you do, it's really cool. You just kind of put them together like this. Then this with one hand and then you peel them back and then you can mount things like control modules and stuff that's not super heavy uh, without having to drill into the car. So that is positively firmly mounted up against uh, the body of the C63 there, the engine compartment. Uh, you can't even see it. And then this little strut brace does a good job of hiding all the wires. It looks really clean. And then we ran our ground wire in here. It looks like it has like a little factory placeholder for the wire. So the wire goes there. And then we just use this factory stud. Uh, it gets power from the injectors, the module, so you don't need to run a 12 volt power source. Oh, and it doesn't make any difference which lead goes to which injector, so you can mix and match those all day long. And that's about it, guys. Uh, this kit, it maybe took an hour and a half to do. The injectors were another hour and a half, so you guys can definitely all do this at home. Uh, now, the next step in the process is uploading uh, our updated tune, because you can't fire this up with 630 cc injectors when it thinks the stocker are in there otherwise it's going to squirt way too much fuel uh, and run very very rich so i got the updated tune from victory road performance uh, this is a euro charged programmer uh, and i'm going to show you guys how to upload a tune it's very easy you can follow their instructions uh, in a future episode but for now i'm going to zip the tune file in we're going to put uh, the factory boxes back on we're going to start her up and go to the gas station and fill up for my first time with e85 All right, guys, it's the next day, and I've purposely run this pretty low on fuel, as you can see, so we can go fill up with E85. Uh, and then this is the app that you put on your phone, and you can check out a few things here. Ethanol content is what we're primarily looking at right there, 10%. Uh, I think you can do in duty cycle right here. Uh, and then temperature, there's actually a temperature probe that I forgot to show you as part of the harness, and you just kind of rest it near the intake manifold, and I think that's for cold start enrichment, uh, so it has an idea of what the temperature of the engine is. Uh, and that's about it. So let's go over to uh, our local gas station. There's one only about a half mile away with E85, and let's go fill her up. This is my first time ever filling up with E85, and I've owned a boosted LS car for 10 years that still isn't on this stuff. My E55 still isn't on E55, E55, on E85, but for some reason my naturally aspirated car is getting this first. And look at this, 51 to 83% ethanol, so not exactly E85 at this station. Uh, but we're gonna find out. I actually found a cool chart uh, that shows some people have gone around testing all of these, and this one says it's E76 right now, so I, I don't know. But anyway, it's uh, 259 a gallon compared to 319. A little bit cheaper, but it does burn about 25 to 30% more of this. All right, guys, we filled up all the way with E85 or whatever's in that pump, and I've just driven it around for maybe 15 minutes. Haven't gone full throttle or anything yet. Uh, and we are at 62% ethanol content. So I have a feeling uh, that that pump does actually have E85 because we still had a couple gallons of E10 mixed in with this and we're already at 62%. Uh, but I just wanted to give you also a uh, little shot of all the panels back on in the air boxes. You can barely tell anything's been done outside uh, of the fuel hose right there and the ethanol sensor. So it runs perfectly fine, no misfires, the exhaust smells way different, uh, and I think it has a little bit better throttle response. So let's go for a ride and I'll give you guys my honest opinion. Second gear hit. <laughs> God, I love this thing. Oh my gosh. All right, so does it feel any different on E62, which is what we have currently mixed together. Short answer, no, it doesn't. Long answer, sort of, 
is a butt dyno is a horrible, horrible way to judge a horsepower gain. So uh, I've gotten emails from guys that have done E85 on these and even at about 65% ethanol, they've gained about 15 wheel horsepower on the dyno, which is awesome. This kit was only like, I think this kit's less than 500 bucks and then plus the injector. So roughly about a thousand bucks uh, for 15 wheel horsepower on a naturally aspirated setup. That is not horrible plus that is on the pretty low end of all of this. So if you do E85 specific tuning, which we haven't done yet, uh, the module is just adjusting for the fueling, uh, we could gain roughly 25 horsepower, possibly even a little bit more. Apparently it does wonders, even on these naturally aspirated M156s. So I can't feel a huge difference. I'm not gonna lie to you uh, and pretend like my head is going back any more than it was before. Although, hang on a second. Whoa, we lost traction. <laughs> that was not a really slow shift. We just lost complete traction there. <laughs> but anyway, this thing feels awesome. It runs awesome. And the smell out of the tailpipe, I mean, it smells totally clean. It's like, I mean, ethanol runs a little bit cleaner. So you can, it's like you can breathe right near the tailpipe. It's awesome. Uh, anyway, guys, so this kit is complete. I can't wait to cycle in some more fuel, get it all the way up to E85. There's even some stations with E90 supposedly around Chicago. Uh, and then we will be getting this car in the dyno after the long tube headers. And I'm gonna roll up to the dyno with normal E10 pump gas, 93 octane, uh, but not a lot of it. We're gonna make some dyno runs with that. Then I'm gonna bring five gallons E85. We're gonna fill it up, do some dyno runs with that. And then we're gonna upload a special tune that is adjusting timing for the E85 and see how much we've gained there. So you guys are gonna get exact numbers on exactly what this kit does for one of these naturally aspirated engines. And then I'm going to do this to my E55 too, where you can gain big time power. Uh, so with that being said, I hope you guys really enjoyed this style of video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you liked this, the more step-by-step, -step, slow pace when I'm talking and working at the same time. That was something kind of new that I did instead of uh, fast forwarding that part. So let me know what you guys think of that. Uh, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video again. Hit the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe if you're new, and most importantly, be eco-friendly and run E85. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.